He sounds satisfied. That's the way it is. I am. I'm always satisfied, Tim. I know. We all are. You always leave me satisfied, Jay. I know. And where's that? Where's that awesome intro at that we always do? Which, Someone usually says Which it. intro? You mean this one? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the summer box office summer movie draft. Hopefully that audio wasn't clipped because I was kind of loud. I think it's okay, <laughs> but we'll keep going. So, <laughs> uh, Nick mm-hmm. and Jay, it's really this week between you guys. I mean, I'm just getting started here with the draft, and, and of course we'll talk about movies and TV shows that have come out in the last couple weeks that have caught our eye or maybe even some flops i don't know but at any rate i think we should start out nick like we always do where you give us the rundown of our draft you know it okay we'll start with me i have amazing spider-man 2 it has made so far 147 million 900,000 on a budget of 200 million for a total of negative 52 million 100,000 and then last weekend i had the shit fest legends of oz open which has the dignity of being the number seven worst opening of all time based off of theater <laughs> average. It has I said shit one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it has made in its first opening weekend, 3,705,000 on a budget of 70 million from what I could find for a negative total of six, negative 66,295,000. And people I, are actually asking for refunds. Thank God. People are should. getting refunds to that. movie. I should get a refund for that movie. And I didn't even go see it. Right. Uh, my total is negative 118,395,000. Yuck. All right, Jay, we'll move on to you. Two weeks yes, two weeks ago, you had the movie Walk of Shame, which has made you 59,209. What's the real I'll title of that movie? Walk of Shame. But Walk of... Okay. Yeah. All right, next. Yeah. Uh, it has a budget of what I could find, 10 million. That could change. I keep checking all the time. It has a negative total of negative $10,059,199. They're still working on the movie. Oh, it's still <laughs> awful. And then last weekend you had the movie Neighbors open when it has made fifty one million seventy thousand on a budget of eighteen million for a total of positive thirty three million seventy thousand. Not bad. Nice. And then Devil's Not, which I could not find a damn thing about. So I'm just gonna put a question mark there until I get more info. Jay, so that even... movie does not exist. <laughs> so I didn't it's even... tying us in knots. Yeah, so I didn't even... I still don't think I've seen a trailer for it or anything. Yeah, it's probably open like two theaters, if anything. So I didn't add it. Devil's so... Knots is not we'll just, a movie. We'll just ignore it ignore it for now. Uh, your total Jay is positive twenty three million ten thousand eight hundred and one dollars. Now, Damn. We will move on to Tim. Tim, you had one movie open. And that was last weekend, John Favreau's Yay. Chef, which opened in a few theaters and it has made two hundred and four thousand dollars on a budget of once again what I could find, which it could change five million for a total of negative four million seven hundred and ninety six thousand for a total of altogether negative four million seven hundred and ninety six thousand. The movie looks really good. I just saw the trailer today for it. Yeah, looks Re- great. Now it's only it's only limited release, though, right? Yeah. Right for, now. For right now, yeah. I don't think it'll be so, too wide when it goes wide, but for right now. Yeah, yeah. but it will it will get a, a wider uh, audience, though. Yeah. Um, and that always helps. So, and it nope. really, it's not that big a budget to to at least. Um, and it could be lower. Out. I don't know. That's just what I found. I was gonna say five million seems a bit steep, other than the fact that you, you got like a big cast in there. That's it's the only five thing million. I can think it's got to be five million. That seems <laughs> right. Oh boy, but it's John Favreau. He's a uh, you know no Tony Snark Stark in this one. I was gonna say Tony Snark. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Stark's not in it, but Robert Downey Jr. is. And so is Tony Snark. He's actually the best boy. Uh, oh, awesome! Grip. So awesome. Uh, you look for him in the credits. Anyway, so I guess we should just first address the giant elephant, or should I say, spider, in the room. Um, <laughs> In that, I think, uh, seen as last week was kind of a a, a uh, drive-by or whatever you want to call it. I don't even know why I said that. But this week is our chance to talk about Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man 2. Ama- so, amazing. Amazing's thrown around a lot. Well, and it's in the title. Amazing. You know, it's amazing. The movie, the movie is amazing. <laughs> It no it pun in intended. I'd amazing. give it a. I, I, I'd retitle it myself. Uh, not the Amazing Spider-Man. It would be the Pretty Good Spider-Man. Well, that one sell tickets. No, hey, I'm gonna go check not. out the Pretty Good Spider-Man this weekend. How about you? A lot of times uh, when I talk to people, it's always you know Spider-Man, pretty good. Go see it. <laughs> so, um, so I guess that what we should address is, <clears throat> guys, 
better or worse than the first one? Oh my god, hands, better. hands down better. The first one's a piece yeah, of garbage. Yeah, it's better. It's better. It's first better. one's good. <laughs> yeah, there were some issues with it though, uh, as it sounds like Nick already has built up uh, his opinions for oh. it. Well, like um, I like I said on Facebook, I, I I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. There was a lot I did like, but there's a lot that I didn't like. So you know, and I have notes, so I'll have fun with that. Yeah. Well, I, I would wanna, say that I the. Wanna, go ahead, Jay. I want to hear the. I want to hear those notes. What you didn't want to hear a few. Mm. All right. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. I just want to hear you just kind of shake the paper like, oh, let's get the notes out. Let's see. Do you, have, the, right. do you have it in a note? Yeah, there you go. Let me grab my, my notes of paper. Great. Right. <gasps> grab the Bible. Let's there grab it is. That. All right. Um, one of my big ones, and it's a problem I have with all Marvel movies. It's one big advertisement for the next one. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The villains, it's especially... Electro hated Spider-Man basically out of necessity for the plot. I just, they really, it just kind of irritated me. I, I like Jamie Foxx, the villain. He was cool. It was a lot better than I expected him to be. But just the yeah, fact Electro that, was awesome. just the fact that, oh, they shot me. Spider-Man, I'm pissed off now. You're my mortal enemy. Just kind of, eh, I mean. Well, they show off how he's mentally unstable as it is. Yeah, he and he's still. obsessed with Spider-Man. And it's he the same becomes thing. obsessed with Spider-Man. Same Spider thing with The Incredibles. Yeah. Uh, you know, that uses the Is that you, Nick? That was my dog. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was my anger at you two giving that a pass. So, I know someone who's getting <laughs> muted for a couple seconds in the <laughs> editing process. Yeah, go ahead. So no, the uh, uh, the thing with the the Incredibles though is you had the same thing where you you had you know the obsessive fan of the superhero and it's that same thing. I mean we've seen it before in other superhero plots. You have the obsessive fan who essentially becomes the villain and it's played up the same way. It's very um, it's very true but to there, a comic but, book style. But there was no for, but for a movie there was no build up to it. It literally was Spider Man's out there and it's you know we're gonna be fine. He's like okay yeah you know we're awesome. And he gets one shot at him, and immediately there's a hundred percent turn, and it's I hate you, you're gonna die. It's like there was no, the, it was one. The thing. build up was how the cameras went from him, everyone could see yeah, him, no. and then it goes to Spider Man. Then you, it, it's in the music score, but like it's supposed no, I, to be. No, that's one of my positives. Can, actually, is the music. You can, no, the music's good. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, it's. I know the uh, whole. Thing I don't. They, I don't know. I don't know if me. it's actually in the dialogue, yeah. but you can hear. Like a voice in his head saying he lied to me, blah 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 blah. Like you can hear like his mind going. Yeah, but I'd have cute. rather Which they'd have a, just explored. His it mind, a bit more. he was already mentally unstable. The accident fucked him up even more. Yeah, I don't know. And I just didn't go for it. That's that's kind of, and again, that's kind of like how shit just goes down in the comic books. It's true, it's but still, seemingly but normal a, person with a few issues gets into a train wreck type of thing. No, and, and, and that's ask, and that's, and that's true, Jay. And we talked about this in the last movie, you know, when I kept saying I hated this the lizard people thing. Like, right? well, that's what he does in the comics, mm -hmm. and I understand, but there's so many things that's like it works in a comic, but in a movie, you have to do more. Mm, well, know, here's the thing: you sound like a DC fan. A Marvel fan would just love the fact that it's such it, it the movie's built around the fact that it's very much like a comic book it's very cartoonish at times uh the colors are very vibrant whereas dc comes across most of the time as very uh realistic very um close to real life but yet there's actually a superhero who's saving everybody's lives uh everything's really dark but the opposite is marvel where everything is seems like we're flipping through the pages of a comic well book. i understand that that it's it's for the comic fans it's a bit lighter but i'd rather have a movie that's made for adults and doesn't have to spoon feed everything and, and have such a quick turn for the kids but let, yeah, let me another, get this though let me th throw this out there that mm -hmm, scene itself ahead. in uh times square right there is probably my favorite scene of the movie shockingly mm -hmm. <laughs> shockingly ugh. uh smack you Nick, for saying and that. it was completely <laughs> un I didn't, I didn't try to do that but it is my favorite scene but it just it's just the one little thing while i was watching it that i was just like okay i'll go with it <laughs> what the, you um, mean the uh you mean at the end there or what no no the whole it's when the whole it's when electro turns when he evil. first oh, okay, comes that out yeah that, that yeah, whole yeah, scene yeah. in Times square that whole from when he comes out yeah. and starts getting the electricity. how come how come the citizens don't run when there's that's what wrong? i was gonna bring up every <laughs> time know. there's like a huge thing of mass why destruction do they stand around watch and watch the stare. yeah like and the why rhino... are there barricades all of a sudden as if it was planned i, I mean know. yeah 
Yeah, yeah. That was I cool. kept laughing both times I watched the movie. And at the First end, they Electro. don't get that kid out of the way who's dressed like Spider Man. They don't get that kid out of the way. They just let him go out there, and all of a sudden, like, get behind the barrier, man, so we can watch this. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, it's not, it's not safe unless you're behind this metal <laughs> barrier. Yeah, that's very. Uh, that uh, made me laugh. He doesn't, like, he doesn't yeah. have huge rocket launchers, but you know this barrier. Like they needed fine. to have, like if they're gonna do that, they might as well have had like popcorn and party blowers, like woo, cheering them on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Ryan watch. Seacrest is there. Oh God, uh, kill him. Um, I said, Kirk oh, Daily. the other thing that like I didn't like um, is the introduction of Rhino uh, or um, what's the actor's name? Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Paul, yeah, when he's driving the truck in the beginning, and spider-man's joking around with him like just talking to him through the window as he's smashing through civilian cars on the <laughs> yeah like, yeah well there go there's like five people dead right there because you wanted to and that's the thing i mean you got you know going into any superhero movie that people will die innocent people will die buildings will be demolished but at the end of the day as long as is spider-man's alive that's yeah. all we care about mm-hmm. well jay you, you know? bring you bringing up the rhino and paul giamatti i was going to use that next because i'm going to use a, a, a positive that i liked and go back and forth so it's not just all hate and all stuff i didn't like but yeah paul giamatti right, next loved paul giamatti in this his over the top hamminess was wonderful mm-hmm. yeah but i the, liked him in the beginning i didn't like him in the end only because the ending was so abrupt and all of a sudden he comes back in the end and it just didn't feel like it, it should have belonged I, there. I was i was fine with it being at the end because it is kind of a big piece but also pissed that once again oh look Tune in next time, folks, where we take more of your money. But 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 listen, sometimes I'm okay with that, but this time it was way too abrupt. It's like the movie just stopped. It wasn't a teaser. It wasn't a, oh, let's wait and see what happens next time. It was a, yep, cut to credits. I mean, th- <laughs> that's all it was. See you in two years. Yeah. When, yeah, I, yeah. when I first watched that scene, I'm like, they're kind of built like the music and everything. This is feeling like we're going to cut to black soon. Mm-hmm. You better not cut to black. Yeah, and the, then they did. The fight it, better not cut, it better not cut to black on the sewer the sewer drain hitting him, just like they do in the commercial. And then, like, as it's happening, that made like, me mad that they used that in the trailers. That the end then, shot was in the trailers. I hate yeah, that. Yeah. Ruins everything. <laughs> as soon as it cut to black, credits. Fucker! <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> And oh, it's not even it's not even a tease. It's just a like not even it's a, a comprehensive It's a middle finger. Yeah, it's not a tease. It's a big There's old a middle finger. finger. There was a resounding, yeah. oh, come on, in my audience when I went and saw it. Yeah. Well, so, guys, we didn't even touch on Green Goblin. Well, so. that, that was my next negative. <laughs> well, see, I read your mind. Here Thank we go. You. Good job, Tell Tim. us. No, I honestly think they, they could have cut the Green Goblin and saved him for the next one. Yes, that's what I think. There wasn't there wasn't even enough of him. Like, why introduce him if he's if he's just going to be in there? He even though he played an integral part to the story, really, I think. Save but in the, the end, next one. It, in the end, we just forget about him, and that's I'm, it. We're, uh, we're not forgetting about him in the end. He's going to be a key role for the Sinister Six. Once that's again, have him there. Setting but him real, up for the next one. Real, th- I know, but. <laughs> The reason they kept him in is because what they want to do with Gwen Stacy. If they what that's, they did with yeah, Gwen Stacy that's, didn't yeah, happen. That's the only thing I can think of why they kept him. Can we call him. spoilers real quick here for a second? Spoiler cast. Hang spoilers. on, hang on, hang on. Right. Spo- spo- spoilers. Okay. All right, spoilers. Uh, and this is the thing that I keep seeing people complain about is Gwen Stacy's death. Just because for the fact they didn't want her to die. I'm like, apparently you've never uh, but yeah. read the yeah. comics or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, that's stupid. But, like, and and they didn't like the whole romantic side of the film, which is ridiculous in my book. Because again, that's, that's Spider-Man. Spider-Man yeah. and, and let's not forget the fact that that if there's anything that Mark Webb is brilliant at, it's building layers within a story. It's not just telling one story. He is amazing at telling multiple stories within one movie and adding not even just multiple stories, but adding an element of emotion and well, actual realism. I, to yeah, I, 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 with that, I agree uh, and disagree with that. I feel like and Andrew Garfield. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Now. I feel, you know, you say he's very good at with multiple storylines. I, I agree and disagree because I, I disagree that if you look at Harry's storyline, it was so ham-fisted in to get to that moment, to you do yeah. that moment with Gwen. I mean, it's just... And I guess, I guess more or less where I'm coming from is he layers it, but I think where Mark Webb shines is when it comes to the emotional parts of the, the movie. It's love like he, stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what where he shines, and that's where he's truly putting in uh, emotion and, and how we should feel at that time for the character. But because everything else just falls flat like you're talking about... 
I don't care what happens to Gwen Stacy. Like, I am not hurt at all. I guess some people, you know, some people may have had a different reaction, but no, I had no the, attachment at that point. The grand majority of people wanted to see that shit happen. Like, every single, like, every time I saw the teasers and stuff, uh, that, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2, like, official Facebook page was posting, like, they showed off, like, a picture of her falling. Yeah. Every comment was like, finally, she's going to die. And, everyone was like, <laughs> and people are going, spoilers? Like, no, dude. Like, everyone knows Gwen Stacy dies. Yeah, I, like, I, yeah. I, I don't think it's a they huge thing. that very well going into Yeah, like, the tr- like uh, so I was stoked to see it, but, like, it's very, um, it's supposed to happen because of the Green Goblin dropping her. Yeah. Right. And, of course, it's Peter's fault. So they and I ha- really did they- I was not buying the fact that Peter was seeing her dad all over the place. And that was just so, again, that's it was another funny. thing that was just thrown it was in just there. Nice. It was just nice to Every see time Dennis I saw Leary Dennis Leary, yeah. I wanted him to just, like, uh, lip sync the word or just, like, mimic the word, fuck you. <laughs> like, every time he was on screen, I felt like that's what he wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah, just I just, really just would have liked if they'd saved Gwen's death for the next one, use the Green Goblin, make mm. him the main villain of the next one. And you could introduce Harry in this one. That way it wouldn't have been such a quick, you know, once again, such a quick turn, and then have it build into the next one. That's where you have your Goblin, and that's where you Nick, do it. Nick, again, I you're disagree. sounding like uh, uh, you're wanting Marvel to become more of a DC, because DC does that. They will focus on one villain good, and then move because on. Because that's why DC has good movies. Is that what you're saying? I mean, well, yeah. I mean, for <laughs> ob- the uh, the obvious example is the Joker. You know, that we're going to focus on the Joker. And yes, you know, at the beginning there were the other uh, group of villains, but the focus was Joker, and he was what made it great. And obviously, you have the actor behind it that makes it great. Yeah, but it just goes to show that. You know, if you spend time focusing on one area of the story, it could make it great. Or are you just trying to cram stuff in for the fans, you know? And that's where I think they fall into it. That's exactly why I think it is. It's cramming stuff in for the fans. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it suffers for it. Uh, one of the big issues that I always see are the designs. Like, a lot of people... I was even talking with one of my friends about the Rhino's outfit. Like, how it was just this gigantic Rhino suit. <laughs> yeah. And... It was like, did you just see little Paul Giamatti's head popping out of the chest of it? <laughs> that was funny, and, though. Yeah, it was funny. I didn't mind the design, but like, there's an, they have, like, they put up the original designs that they were, con- like, that they were considering going with. And, and come on, you know. They looked, they, and I'm like, the one looked even better. I'm like, it actually looks more like the classic rhino. Yeah. He's in, like, an actual, just, he's a, a looks like a mascot a rhino suit. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and then the goblin suit looked a lot cooler. Well, I gotta like say, the, yeah, one goblin thing about good. the goblin that made me mad, the suit was cool, but what irritated me about that suit was, okay, he has this disease that's gonna kill him. Try the mm-hmm. suit first, because it has yeah. the healing thing in it. You know? Um, he had to have the mutagen, though, as part of it. As he well. didn't like, know he... that. The suit supposedly cures everything or heals you. Try that first. I mean, it just it was just one little thing that I was like, I would have tried that first and then tried the mutagen that could cause me to be crazy. Mm, Although possibly. The, the, I'll have to watch it again. Yeah, the, I, thought he, I thought he needed to have it in him in order to get the suit on. Yeah, I, I, it, it might be. I might have overlooked that. But with the, with the goblin's face as well, I did not like the way Dane DeHaan played it. He just looked like he was constipated the whole time. The joke I saw that was really funny is he looks like uh, I forgot the kid's name, but from the original uh, Fright Night, oh, Evil, evil Ed. Ch- yeah, Evil Ed. That's, Everyone was like, "That's Evil Ed." The only, the <laughs> only thing I liked about the Green Goblin, even his voice kind of sounded like yeah, it. The only thing I liked about the Green Goblin's makeup and, and his all that was how the hair went into looked like the cap. Mm-hmm. The old, from the comics, his actual hat or the cap or whatever it went into like a little point. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing I truly liked. What the fuck was that? My oh my god! But that was probably the only thing I liked about that makeup itself was that. Right uh, there. Guys, uh, Sally fucking Fields. I thought she. Yeah, was she's always great. Yeah. She knows. She knows Peter's secret. Come on, come mm-hmm. on. Why did she I hear knows. Godzilla earlier? I know that movie's this Friday, <laughs> but why did I just hear Godzilla? That's that's actually my uh, my cell phone. Oh damn it! You mute that thing. I did. <laughs> I always do, but I completely forgot this time. Uh, oh, but no, uh, yeah, Sally Field, she was good. Sally Field, yeah. Um, the music was great. It was, had some good stuff going for it. Yeah, it was good. And Mark Webb's on board to do one more, and then we'll see the next reboot generation after that. I'm sure. So I I don't know what's gonna happen, but all I know is I'm pretty sure he's on board for one more 
one more uh, Amazing Spider-Man three. I also I'm thought they, they could throw have... enough money at him to keep doing more. Yeah, I also thought they could. They should have the stuff with the dad should have been at the beginning of the movie. Like him finding out about it should have been all at the beginning. It kind of just stalled mm-hmm. the movie halfway through it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was all right movie. I mean, I wasn't blown away, but you know what? It it's it's all right. It gets it's points right. for me for being way better than the first one, so I will like it, it regardless, better. and I will like it regardless because it's got Paul Giamatti. So that gets a point there. As well, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And an all IMAX. Right. And an IMAX. It was pretty damn cool. So. All right. Well, there's Spider-Man. Uh, should we... Is there any, any other movie? Did anybody see Neighbors? Nope. Legends of... Did anybody see Legends of Us? Hell no. <laughs> no. Uh, well, with that then, I've got Godzilla coming up. Yep. Coming up. This it's Friday. It's happen. And everyone's excited about it. I'm uh. a little worried about the budget... Uh, compared to how much it's going to make. But at the same time, this has been a long awaited movie with lots of marketing behind it. So it's going to get, yeah, it's going to get my money. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll all pan out for Godzilla. And I wish we could just have a little soundboard with that Godzilla uh, call on it. I can play it right now. That's my phone, but it wouldn't sound as good. No, no, of course not. (laughs) Um, all right. Well, what else do we have? I mean, should we talk a little bit about TV? I know we've been watching that. Well, I just uh, want to mention real quick next weekend. This weekend's also, uh, for me, I have million dollar arm, the John Hamm baseball movie. Mm. And that may be, you know, what other family movies are out right now, you know, other than legends of Oz, that isn't making money. And they're so. not seeing that. Yeah. No. So you may be in good shape for that. Yeah, I'm just hoping the budget, I'm assuming the budget will be low. And I, I if it breaks even, that's fine. Spider-Man's not doing what I thought it would. So I need something to give me some money. Yep, exactly. Is do we have X Men this month? Yeah, that's yes. the week after. All right, who's got that? You do. You do. Okay, sweet. You've got that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the week after that. That's where it's X Men for you and blended for Tim. That's gonna destroy. I'm gonna do good with that yeah, one. I agree. Did you uh, see the news that Channing Tatum has been confirmed to play Gambit? I did. In the next one, I did. Yeah, I'm, I. I don't like to say it's an immediately horrible choice because... <laughs> the Joker? I mean, yeah, because of the Joker <laughs> and then just other times I've been wrong, but it just, he seems too big to play Gambit. I'm like, I don't see it. I don't... Technology, Jay. Yeah, I'm oh, I'm man. okay with it until I see some stuff. I've, I've been with that a lot lately where, yeah, when it, I think the Joker, same with you, is what did it, where I'll hear a casting decision and I at least wait to see something before I make a big decision. And People say he's a terrible actor, but I disagree with that. I, mean, I like, like him. I think he's. A, I think he's a good actor. What? Yeah. Who's saying just, he's a bad I actor? I have. I. I. I've. I haven't seen him in anything truly terrible, other than like you know the Step Up movies or something. And but, that wasn't his fault. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bad acting is due to bad directing. Yeah. Channing, bad writing. Bad Tate directing. Young. All that crap. Yeah. So um, I'm okay with. It. I, I'll be fine with it for now until I see something. But he. Uh, He's awesome in like every comedy I've seen him in, so I'm Yeah. I'm, and he's a I'm huge hopeful he can pull it off. Yeah, and he's I read he's a huge Gambit fan. Like he's been wanting to play that character for years. So I think that's gonna help with it as well. We shall see. Yeah. What else? X Men. Who's X Men is X Men uh D C? Who is that? That's Marvel. X Men's Marvel, dude. I don't know. X Men is uh, certainly so not my favorite. So it's not but... gonna have one villain in it. <laughs> the uh the next fantastic four reboot uh is apparently supposed to take place alongside the new x-men like they're gonna be kind of yeah because they're both what 20th century fox i think yeah well te- technically uh the fantastic four is supposed to be in new york city as well along with punisher spider-man cool and x-men are usually around yeah like they always they always meet each other in like the comics or the cartoon shows but yeah they said recently that they will be like referencing Fantastic Four or the X Men within the new Fantastic Four movie. So there might be some cool crossovers cool. in the next films. Um okay. Any other movies? Um as far as uh I don't know of any other movies, but you brought up T V. We got Fargo tonight, so I can't wait to watch that. Should be good. Fargo. Yeah, yeah it's that, that is the sh- that is the show to watch. I love right it. Now. Genius. So good. Billy Bob Thornton is amazing in that show. 
Mm-hmm. And it, it's finally uh, having elements of the movie. I mean, it's always had elements of the movie, but it's finally storyline itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it was funny because I was watching the movie Fargo was on this weekend. I was watching it. And I turned it on right at the part where Steve Buscemi was burying that money that the one character <laughs> yeah. found last week. And I was like, oh, right. Perfect. That's where that money's from. Yeah. That's exactly where it's from. It's where Steve it's Buscemi brilliant. buried it. It's the same Absolutely briefcase, brilliant. the same uh, window scraper that he sticks in the snow. Yeah, it's it's the. I knew immediately. I was like, oh, awesome! They connected. I them. totally forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Now if we great. just get a there wood is chipper, a god, it'll be great. <laughs> but uh, I also want to mention the awesomeness that is Hannibal being renewed for a third season. Yep, stoked for that. And Bates Motel was renewed as well, even though I haven't finished the season two yet. Me neither. It's gotten crazier, man. Bates Motel, the way it finished out is just that that show gets darker and darker and better and better. Uh, I don't know what they're gonna do for another season. Um, I don't know how more insane the Bateses can go can get. <laughs> um, they are just crazy people. I think did, absolutely did, insane. Was there any cross dressing in this one? Uh no 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 there they'll, wasn't. they'll probably start they'll probably start doing that in the next one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he's yeah he's got to kill somebody. He's gonna, he'll then, eventually dress up as his mother. Yeah, like, in the actual movie. What happens. Yeah, or they'll uh, just in the first episode of third season have everyone be killed, and then every week after that it's just a blank screen. That'll be well, that'll be very daring. They probably only have just a couple more seasons left, I would think. Or it's gotta, um, yeah, it's got to catch up eventually. It's got to catch up eventually. He's he's just about reaching the age of where Norman was in the actual movie. Now I don't know how true that they'd keep. I mean, in in reality, they could actually go past it. They could, you know, whatever they wanted to do. Um, they could do a whole season that takes place after the fact. I don't know, whatever. But um, I, I can't see that show or Hannibal going past like five or six seasons. Hannibal J, I'd be shocked if it made it past the next one. Well, but three is going to be the hump. Three is the hump you have to get over yeah, because three, a lot of shows will and, and, do a three-run and three series, yeah. and then that's, like, that's it And sometimes. I think by them doing the Red Dragon storyline, that should bump up ratings a bit because it's something people know. It is. Uh, well, yeah, because Red Dragon, it is. That's, you know, it's one of the books. It's I don't one know. one of the it. movies where the first two seasons are its own its own storyline leading up to the actual books that these are based off of the characters. Now, another show, Louie is back on the air finally after 18 oh my months. God. <laughs> and it is great. It is better Season than ever. Four. Just just brilliant. Just making me like hate myself cuz I want to create something that good. <laughs> but the thing is is like so it's good. real life, man. He is he is more real than ever. Like, yeah, we're just the, laughing because it's so subtle and so true to life. That's why it's funny. Like, at f- like the whole train sequence on the newest one. Yeah. Uh, like, the funniest part was just when he's yelling fuck and shit. And then the woman's like, you shouldn't swear in front of your child. Shit, goddamn, goddamn shit. <laughs> <That's just like laughs> again. But then, like, when it's that whole nonstop take where he's, scre- like, yelling at his daughter. Like, none of that's funny, but it's just amazing to see like how well yeah. acted it is and yeah and it's just good and that's it's, louis you know not not across the board but a great deal of it is all him and the writing the directing of course the mm-hmm. acting the editing that's him it's dark humor to me like it, a lot of it's just funny that's what i'm saying humor. it's real life i mean when louis originally pitched the show he said it's about a guy whose life keeps getting worse and worse you know, mm-hmm. he, he, it never gets well, better. They did that. They did that episode where he does pitch yeah, the exact show itself. Exactly, and, then, and they're like, "No, that'll never work." <laughs> <laughs> and he won like a shitload of awards for season two. He, oh yeah, he's won so many Emmys, and I mean, the guy deserves it truthfully. Uh, mm-hmm. It's so good, and it it feels so indie. It still feels like really, like there's not a big budget put into it. And it just, it feels real. Like it feel you know what I mean? Like it's just got a certain artsy kind of quality to it where Louis is kind of uh, being able to put in his own creative elements in terms of the directing and the writing. And um, there's these moments in the show where it's like he's, we're, it, it looks like he's experiencing a situation and then we find out it was just in his head. Uh, those are always fun elements of the show as well. And I, the show, it just keeps getting better. I'm so glad it's back. Yep. I Wonderful. was worried that we weren't going to see another season until 2015. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy that it's back on the air. Well, if you're if you're any if you're one of those people that waits for Sherlock to come back, you're good with waiting for shows. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sherlock's going to be another, like, year and a half. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. I know uh, NBC and Fox both uh, put out their lineups. We got Parenthood renewed. For the yeah. for the final season, right? Parenthood? Yeah. Final, yeah. I th- Did I it say it's, that? Yeah. It's the I final it, season? I think it's final yeah. season. Yeah, that's what I heard. Shit. That's the well, final get season. One more. Parks and Rec is its final season. Yeah, it's all a bunch of final seasons. Oh, man. We let's got Gotham starting final, up, though. Let's, yeah, Gotham looks good, man. It looks Gotham really looks good. decent. Yeah. And... Uh, if you, Penny if, Dreadful just started. I haven't watched that yet, Nick. I know you said you didn't really like it. Not much. If you haven't been watching, if you haven't been watching Silicon Valley, you've got to watch oh, that show. Mm-hmm. So fucking funny. It's a good show. It is. Oh, it's man. really funny. Uh, Mike Judge is the creator. Um, amazing. Just incredible show. Really funny. It is. I good. wish and it was longer. It's only like twenty-seven minutes. Yeah, they actually after the like second or third episode, the news came out that it already got green lit for another season. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I like when they announce that like right away, so then you don't think that you're just you know wasting your time with something. Yeah, and, and I guess the quality of those sh- of these shows, guys, are just going way up through the roof. I just wish that some of the bigger networks would find another way to distribute the show. Mm-hmm. Um, other than just on TV. And then some of these, like people like ABC, I know for a fact, you have to have, and I believe there's a couple, maybe, maybe Fox now too, I don't know. But some of these networks are requiring you to have a cable subscription in order to stream the show on their website. And I say, fuck that shit. That is mm-hmm. stupid. Stupid. You've never oh. asked more for piracy than you have by doing that. Um, it's just ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, people will always find other ways to watch the shows and, you know, I guess I'm using a DVR more than ever now Same uh, here. because of it, but, uh, yeah, that's just ridiculous. But other than that, man, like the quality, of the, the quality of these shows are going up and I believe Netflix is, um, uh, renewing or not renewing, but it was already announced. Orange is the new black is coming back. Oh yeah. Um, all the, they season. already have a trailer up for it. Yep. 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 So a lot of good stuff around the corner. Solid and stuff. So, is Community there any other canceled. any other TV shows? Community got canceled with some news. I don't that know if it's going to get finally, by anything Finally, else. finally, finally. Fuck that. <laughs> you didn't like that show? No. I love no. Community, dude. Community was pretty funny, I thought. Uh, Jay, you need to just not catch up on, but just watch like the last five episodes of Parks and Rec, just so you can lead up to the finale of this season because it was so good. Nick, did you see the finale? I did, and I love that the director, the creator, said that they're sticking with that for the next season. Yeah, that's so they're good. Sticking with that time. Yeah. I'm gonna keep finishing up through the seasons that I have to watch. I love get Parks to that and Recreation. Finale. Like, even if you, because that's sometimes a show that you can just watch out of order, but at least watch maybe the last four mm-hmm. in order, um, or the last four or five in order, and it is, because the finale is so good. Yeah. So, so great. I just wish they would bring Rob Lowe back. I just, but I, but I feel yeah. like with him gone, they've been giving Andy more to do, and I'm fine with that. And they've got some newer characters. Billy Eichner. Billy is Eichner in it a lot. is, yeah. every time that man speaks on that show is, <laughs> is wonderful. <laughs> I can't wait for his show that's coming out. Yeah, yeah he's got a show coming out, uh, executive produced by Amy Poehler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a pilot, so we don't know if it got... Did it get picked up? Do we know? I don't think so, don't, not yet. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. A lot of really funny stuff around the corner, so can't wait to see it. Um, all right, Nick, so do you want to tell us... I know you had said what's... Uh, we kind of covered what's coming out next week, but... Oh. W- yes. Sorry, uh, just some news. Uh, Are you pregnant? Off. No, I wish. Uh, ComingSoon.net <laughs> just got posted some news on Channing Tatum. So not only is he playing Gambit in the 2016 X-Men Apocalypse, but he's going to be, uh, he, he'll have his own movie as Gambit. There's going to be a Gambit movie, apparently. Hmm. I guess, well, that's news. I guess that makes sense. He better fucking own that role then. He, he, he said really breaking news. He said in an interview he's already working on the accent. So <laughs> at least he's trying, you know, he's working on it early. Yeah, here's hoping. I want it to be good. Channing Tate Yum. Yep, that's all, I can't get that out of my head. That's all I <laughs> that's how I want to say his name every time. Channing Tate Yum. 
<laughs> I love him. Still my favorite comedy of the last year. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Uh, all right, so Nick, why don't you just cover up uh, what we got left for the month of May? Who's got what? All right, so this Friday, you have Godzilla. I have Million Dollar Arm. Week after Both. that, May 23rd, Both. Jay has X-Men Days of Future Past, Present, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, and Blended is you have that, Tim. And mm-hmm. then the week after that, the last weekend of May, May 30th, Tim, you have Maleficent, and I have A Million Ways to Die in the West. So if we look at the month of May, I think the top two marketed movies of May is Godzilla and Maleficent. I haven't um, been seeing a lot of... I, I saw a lot of Maleficent commercials like about a few months ago, but I haven't seen much in like the past oh, month. Oh, they're still going, man. They are What they're doing is they're taking them on the front of any movie now. I'm just so uh, worried that it's... see them at the theater. I'm just so worried that it's going to be Snow White and the Huntsman. It might be. It doesn't be. look that way, but I don't know. you never know. I mean, with Maleficent, I like her early work, but, you know, I don't know. Yep. Uh, I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, that, right. but sadly, that weekend, I'll be in the theater for a different movie. It'll be if I have time to see Maleficent. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, because, I mean, that A Million Ways to Die in the West, they're playing trailers like that like crazy. Yeah. Trailers for that like and, crazy right and now. And I've read the book, and it's going to be so damn funny. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, can't wait. It's, it should be good. Mm-hmm. They keep showing the trailer where it's the subtitle. He's talking to the, yeah, uh, yeah, the Indians. Native Americans. Yeah, and he's and he says, Mila Kunis, Mila Kunis. <laughs> yeah. That's still funny. That's still funny. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else that we need to cover? Nope. No. No. Oh, no. They, they announced uh, who's taking over Colbert's spot on Comedy Central. Oh uh, yeah, who so, is that going to be? John Oliver? No, he's on HBO. No, it's it's the I cannot remember his name, but it's the African American guy, the correspondent on the on the show. He's been in a uh, bunch so it's of a movies. Guy from, it's a guy from Colbert Report already. No, from Daily Show. He's oh, from a, Daily he's Show. A, yeah, he's Still, a correspondent though, on right. Daily Show, and I it's love, only appropriate, right? Yeah, and it's I only appropriate to give it to a correspondent. And I absolutely love what they've named it because he's he's black, and so they've named it the Minority Report. <laughs> and i think that's wonderful nice, nice. can't it, it. It, i mean yeah it's gonna be good oh yeah it's gonna be really funny um i'm not worried about it at all and colbert we'll see how how he does with his gig but uh i think it'll be fun it'll be a little bit of a different challenge for him a different time slot and different um no it's uh, it's audience, it's really it's, it's, so. the, it's the same time slot oh i'm sorry but i mean a different audience different though. audience yeah a big difference yeah yeah uh, okay, well, that leaves us, I guess, for for an ending here to say goodbye from the uh, Snobcast for our black... What the fuck are we? I like that. Our what, black, what the fuck's our real name guys, again? Real guys. Real guys. Real guys Snobcast. Snobcast. Thanks for joining us, guys. And we will... Or girls. That one girl who's listening. Uh, we will be back again next week and, and we and, and we should have a website soon soon i hope because <laughs> i certainly haven't had any time to do it so maybe we can yeah. uh hire hire an intern uh for free off of craigslist that's right um that we will feed in a cage and s- strip and this is getting way too dark and deep now and we're gonna need Matthew you're watching McCon- too much norman bates man I was going to say we need Matthew McConaughey to solve it all. All right, guys. Well, that's it for Real Guys Snobcast this week's episode. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Peace out. See you.